Hello, my name is Gregory Osborne. I'm an instructor with XR Terra. And in this module, we're going to be doing an introduction to physics within Unity. Specifically, we're going to be talking about colliders and rigid bodies. So let's start with the rigid body. The rigid body is the component that lets Unity calculate forces and apply forces to an object in the scene. It handles collision and whether to add gravity to an object, whether to have it bounce when it gets hit. Any object whose movement depends on Unity making some sort of physics calculation will need a rigid body. Very commonly, your player controller will have a rigid body component. So they like when they walk into a wall, they'll be pushed back by the wall. If you want to have gravity on your character, that is from a rigid body. Normally, there should usually be only one rigid body per object. So let's talk about colliders. Colliders are basically the invisible boundaries for the shape of a game object. It doesn't necessarily have to match the actual mesh that like a game object uses for visual display. The collider is a separate entity. It's a component that pretty much determines the physics boundaries of an object. Normally, the more simplified a collider is, the more efficient, because it's a lot easier to make calculations with just like a sphere than it is making physics calculations with a super complex, highly detailed mesh. So the most common types of colliders that we have is the box collider, the sphere collider, and the capsule collider. Those are relatively simple, and you can usually combine a bunch of colliders together in order to generally approximate the shape of an object. That process is called using compound colliders, right? You're not restricted to using only one collider component per object. In fact, in a lot of cases, you will actually use a large amount of primitive colliders for more complex objects just to avoid having to use a mesh collider. Mesh colliders actually use the mesh information in order to generate collision information, but these tend to be very poorly optimized from a physics perspective. It's a lot harder to calculate intersections and collisions with meshes than it is with just boxes and spheres and capsules. So we usually recommend that you make up a combination of box, sphere, and capsule colliders. Let's actually make a demonstration in Unity. I have a new scene here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a plane. This plane I'm just going to put into the center of our scene here is zero, zero, zero. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a primitive object. All the primitive objects that we've got usually come with a collider. So if I go into the hierarchy plus button and create myself a 3D object a cube, for example, I'm going to go ahead and reset its position just so I know exactly where it is. It's at zero, zero, zero. And I'm going to bring it up. And in fact, I'm going to tilt it just a little bit, just, just to make it uh, bounce a little. Because my intention for this box right now, if I hit play, nothing will happen. This box will simply float in the air. And that is because we don't have any rigid body component on it. And so Unity will just simply, it's just a box. This is just where the box is. That's it. If I want this box to fall to the ground and maybe bounce, all I would need to do is add a rigid body component onto here. So I'll add a rigid body component. You'll notice that's got used gravity checked pretty much by default. This, if you want it to float in zero gravity, you can uncheck this box. But for now, I do want it falling to the ground. So I'll hit play. And we should find that this box will fall to the ground and, and bounce around a little bit. It won't just kind of come to a stop. There we go. It rolls just a little bit, just a little bit. It's not really bouncy, but you can use this rigid body in order to give gravity to an object in your scene. The next checkbox right underneath it is, is kinematic. Now, what is kinematic means is that this box cannot be affected by outside forces, but it can impart forces. So the, the kind of best idea I think I would have for demonstrating this is how about I put like, I don't know, let's let's put some object underneath this cube. I'm just going to kind of I'll, I'll duplicate it or something and 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 reset its position, basically. So this box is going to have a rigid body. I'm going to say disable gravity. Right now, when we hit play, this cube will fall onto this box and this box will be pushed down. Um, and, you know, there we go. We can see that the box did receive external forces. But if I was to go ahead and check this is kinematic box on our bottom cube, then it won't accept 
forces. It will be able, however, to stop this box, you know, so the, the box will fall, it'll kind of bounce, and we'll still be able to use this box, like if I drag it around manually, we'll still be able to like use it to like push things around. So it can still like, you know, impart force onto other objects, but it cannot receive them. So a very kind of common example of this might be a moving platform, right? When I jump on a floating moving platform, I don't want the impact of my body to send that moving platform down. But I do still want to maybe be carried by that moving platform. The friction of the moving platform carries me around. Another example I might give is a baseball bat. If I'm holding like a baseball bat and I'm using it to hit a ball, I want to make sure that the baseball bat can impart force onto the ball, but I don't want the ball to give me an equal and opposite reaction on the bat, right? I don't intend for the bat to kind of start spinning around in my hands. I want it to be firm and secure. I want it to be an unstoppable force, basically. Like you cannot exert force onto it, but it can exert force onto other things, is what is kinematic does normally. I'm gonna demonstrate that you can combine colliders. So. Let's say, for example, I'm, I'm just going to delete this cube. Let's say we add another collider onto this game object. Let's say we add, I don't know, a sphere collider someplace. Right now, by default, it's right inside the cube. But if I wanted to, I could change the center of, of where the sphere collider is and move it down. So now what should happen, actually, is you'll see when this thing falls, it will it'll use this sphere collider as part of the shape of the rigid body. So when I hit play, you'll see it, it rather than falling straight down, this sphere will touch the plane and then it'll kind of like pivot like that. For example, you can also do this even without the sphere collider. If I was to just make a uh, make a child sphere, um, say of this, and I, I move this over, you know, underneath it or whatever I could probably and it'll because this sphere is a child of this rigid body the sphere collider on the child sphere still feeds into the shape calculations of the rigid body right when I hit play kind of the same thing will happen you'll be you'll see that the uh the sphere kind of is part of the object and the cube stops when the sphere touches the ground and then kind of keels over the last bit about this box collider and then all the colliders is this box here that says is trigger. What is trigger does, and I'm going to make my sphere is trigger, it basically makes the collider not a physics object. It, everything can pass through it, nothing will exert force on it. So even though this sphere has a collider on it, it's because it's trigger, it will kind of be ignored in the rigid body calculations, right? We'll see it fall. And then it'll just kind of go through the floor and kind of be dragged around based on how the uh, cubes box collider kind of does its calculations. So is trigger is primarily used in combination with code. Basically, the idea is, is it's used to detect when something has entered this collider, right? When something enters the collider, it fires an event on trigger enter, but that is in the next module. So for now, we're just going to leave it alone. We're, we'll, we'll talk more about how this works later. One thing that I want to talk about is physic materials. So on the sphere collider, there's on, on the sphere collider and the box collider and all the different colliders, there is a slot, a reference box for a physic material. Now, what a physic material is, is a material that determines how bouncy and how much friction a collider should e exhibit. So if I go into my assets folder and I create for myself a, a physic material, just using right clicking, going to create and then going down to physic material, I'm going to call this bouncy. And this physic material, it's different from a, a visual material. This is a physic material. If I click on it in the inspector, I can see a couple of friction values and a, a bounciness value, as well as information on how to combine values. So right now, right, the dynamic friction, this is sort of the default stuff. Dynamic friction is 0.6, static friction is 0.6. The difference between them is static is the friction of an object when it's at rest and dynamic is the friction of an object when it's moving. The bounciness right now is by default usually set to zero. And so that means that even when like I get hit, I'm not gonna necessarily like experience a, a resulting like opposite force. We're not going to experience that. But I want to make this floor bouncy is what I actually want to do. So I'm going to change bounciness from zero to one and one is a maximum of bounciness. I can't actually increase it past one. The idea behind this now is if, if I was to apply 
this physics material onto this plane. And I'm going to do that right now. But right now, by the way, it has a mesh collider. Usually I mean, on a plane, it's okay, but it's usually a good idea to replace most of your mesh colliders with something like a box collider. You'll notice, by the way, when I add the box collider onto an object, if I click on this edit collider button, it'll actually show me that it, it does by default approximate the shape of the object that you put the box collider onto, it actually like understands and, and edits the values of the box collider in order to approximate the shape so that when you start with the box collider, it actually, it's pretty close a lot of the time. This box collider, I'm actually going to give it the physics material that we just created. I'm gonna give it the bouncy physics material. The material right now, the bounce combine mode is average. If I wanted to have it be the maximum amount of bounciness, then I would select maximum. So actually, I am going to do this. I want the maximum amount of bounciness. Uh, when it's on average, it averages out the bounciness of the two objects. When it's on maximum, it means no matter what, it's going to bounce the maximum amount. So what should happen is I'll hit play, and we'll see this sphere fall onto the plane and then kind of bounce right back up. Oh, the sphere is a trigger, isn't it? So it'll just be the cube that's bouncing around. But look at how bouncy this thing is. It's kind of fun looking. Uh, and of course, yeah, there it goes falling into the infinite abyss. But still, that's kind of a, a, an idea of how you can create a physical material in order to edit the collider properties. Like how bouncy is it? How much does it resist friction and movement? The last thing I wanted to show you is objects with a rigid body can use a constant force component. So constant force is just a component I can use to like add either angular momentum to an object or just linear momentum to an object. In order to demonstrate constant force, I'm actually going to go ahead and create for myself a new cube. This cube I'm going to put basically right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a rigid body onto it, and I'm going to add a constant force component onto it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a constant force of, I don't know, 10 in the Z direction. And what should happen is this cube will now be kind of dragged in the Z direction. There'll be a constant force on the rigid body, con always pulling it off in that direction, right? In addition, I can give it torque, which is kind of angular momentum. So I can say, yeah, rotate along the Z axis by 100. And what should happen is when I hit play, we'll have a very amusing sort of spinning cube. Yeah, there we go. And it's kind of always spinning. It's always being having force applied to it. So this is a good way to test things. And depending on how physics-based your, your application is, you can kind of have a lot of fun with this constant force. But for now, that's everything that we wanted to show you about rigid bodies and colliders. And hopefully we'll see you in the next module.